We saw that Dawkins' claim that life is just a chemistry problem is really only a faint hope in the minds of die-hard origin-of-life chemists. A desperate hope that life might follow naturally from some simple chemical chain reactions. Dawkins and all the other evolutionists who don't want to admit that life is not just a chemical problem turn their eyes determinedly away from the truth put forward by Karl Popper, a man widely considered the greatest philosopher of science in our time, in studies in the philosophy of biology, way back in 1974. Like most philosophers and scientists, he uses technical jargon, so I'll explain what he says in simple terms. What makes the origin of life and of the genetic code a disturbing riddle is this. The genetic code is without any biological function unless it is translated, that is, unless it leads to the synthesis of the proteins whose structure is laid down by the code. What he's saying is, the DNA is like a memory stick with instructions to guide a robot factory to build some complex machinery. That memory stick is useless unless there is a computer to read it and direct the robots to make the machines. But the machinery by which the cell translates the code consists of at least 50 macromolecular components which are themselves coded in the DNA. Thus, the code cannot be translated except by using certain products of its translation. What he's saying here is that the 50 or so robots in the factory where the complex machinery is made are themselves coded in the DNA. Both the robots and the complex machinery are far above the ability of scientists to even understand, never mind to make. There's no way of making the information system, the robots or the machines except by a living cell making them itself. So the whole system has to be there, or none of it works at all. This constitutes a baffling circle, a really vicious circle, it seems, for any attempt to form a model or theory of the genesis of the genetic code. It wipes out any attempt to make a chemical solution for life. Dawkins, Morowitz and everyone else dreaming of a chemical origin of life should have thrown in the towel instead of wasting any more time and taxpayers' hard-earned money. Popper rubs salt into evolution's fatal wound with, Thus, we may be faced with the possibility that the origin of life, like the origin of physics, becomes an impenetrable barrier to science and a residue to all attempts to reduce biology to chemistry and physics. In simple terms, there's no chance that life happened by chemistry and physics alone. The origin of life is an impenetrable barrier to secular humanist science, but not to real science. The science put forward by Francis Bacon, the study of nature which carries the stamp of the creator, the study of nature which follows the scientific method, the science based on the worldview that the creation was created by a creator, the science of Newton, Euler, Faraday, Joule, Maxwell and all the other great scientists before the scientific establishment abandoned the scientific method and its Christian worldview. Secular science, which is based on man's reason, which carries the stamp of his own folly, and the only possible alternative to creation by a creator, the creation created itself, is doomed to either admit that it's going in the wrong direction or to carry on forever wasting time, skill and energy, plus the taxpayer's money, going round and round Popper's vicious circle, vainly trying to reduce life to chemistry and physics. For years, scientists loved the brilliant atheist Fred Hoyle, 
But when he realised that atheism could not explain the world as it is, Dawkins and the rest of the world's evolutionists stuck their fingers in their ears. They didn't want to hear that a common sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics as well as with chemistry and biology. And instead of turning angrily against their beloved atheist philosopher, Anthony Flew, when he admitted, evolution cannot account for the fact that one single cell can contain more information than all the volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica put together, they should have opened their eyes and taken seriously what Sir Karl Popper told them in 1974. The origin of life is not a chemical problem. It's more like an engineering problem. It's like setting up a robot factory which manufactures incredibly complex machinery. And this super miniaturized robot factory runs on power which it generates from things which grow all around it. It repairs itself when things get damaged or worn out. And most amazing of all, it has the astonishing ability to procreate other robot factories which not only have the ability to manufacture all these astounding robots and machinery and information banks and information processing systems, but to move, to engage with the world and in the case of man, to create art, literature, skyscrapers, aeroplanes, hospitals, universities, spacecraft. How is it that intelligent men considered outstandingly wise by the standards of this world, cannot even see that life is vastly more than just a chemical problem. I think we have the answer in Romans chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. They did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves wise, they became fools. And in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 20, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.